There is a secret add-on that comes packaged with Blender that will help you get the most out of your grease pencil workflow. So let's take a look at that. Tip tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTart and welcome to another Grease Pencil animation tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at a secret add-on that is disabled by default but does come packaged with Blender that gives you a bunch of quality of life and workflow tools for your Grease Pencil workflow. So as you can see here I've got a uh, client project open. I've been working on this the past few weeks um, and I've got some 3D models as well as some Grease Pencil elements here. So just to fill you in the basic premise of this story is there is a one who is enjoying a cupcake or about to but then two gentlemen turn up who are yet to be animated as you can see and they say hey wait a minute that's a fake cupcake our cupcake is made with just the good stuff so the swan eats their cupcake instead and is much happier and the camera pans up and it reveals their logo and obviously with client work you want to be uh, efficient because the longer it takes you the less you're getting paid per hour so this grease pencil tools add-on is going to really help with this by giving us some proper quality of life workflow tools so let's go through them one by one and explore how they could benefit you as a grease pencil animator illustrator 3d modeler in blender whatever if you're using Using Grease Pencil, this will be helpful to you. So I'm just in my custom uh, 2D animation workspace here and I've just focused in on this character known as Little Mike because I'm currently animating him. So to enable this add-on you just need to go to Edit, Preferences and Add-ons and then type in the word Grease and this should be the only Grease Pencil add-on that you see in the list. It's called Grease Pencil Tools. Check that box, hit refresh and you are good to go. If you then press N you can see that you will have a grease pencil section in your properties panel here with some new tools. So let's take a look at what some of these do. Box to form is essentially a more classic transform tool that you can use in Blender. And there's a few different ways that you can use it. The shortcut is control T or you can click box to form. If you select your grease pencil object in object mode and press control T, you'll see that you now get a bounding box. Now you can scale, rotate and translate using the standard Blender tools. But the really cool thing is that if you select one of these edge points here, you can now distort your object as a whole. Now you're not just limited to object mode if I just undo that. I'll just press tab twice to cancel any of those changes and I'll tab myself into edit mode. You can go to control tab edit mode. You can see here that I just have my head selected and if I press control T in edit mode then I can do the same things to my head. Now moving, scaling, rotating, you know, we've had those forever, however, but the distort options can be very powerful. For example, just pulling your character's line work into different positions. You can press M to toggle between spline or direct adjustment modes. Basically adds in some invisible handles to your um, bounding box that changes the way that the structure inside is affected. You can see here that with spline mode turned on, that gets pushed outside the bounding box, whereas it with turned off, it contains each corner. So it just depends on how you like to work. For more control as well, you can press your numbers along the top row of your keyboard, not your numpad uh, numbers, to subdivide the surface of your controls and adjust the points and things like that on a more detailed level. Additionally, you can also press control up and down to subdivide on only the Y axis or left and right to subdivide on the X axis and you can get more minutia of control, similar to the sculpt tool, but now with a more traditional warping grid, which can be quite useful. Once again, that's either space bar or enter to confirm and delete backspace, control T or tab twice to cancel your changes. Let's control tab over into draw mode. You'll notice if I just add an extra stroke, Pressing Control T will only affect your most recent stroke, but you can do all of the same things. Let's subdivide this a whole bunch of times and just start pulling around to create a really wild shape. As you can see, you can get some really crazy changes. Press Enter to confirm that. So depending on your workflow, the box to form tool can be incredibly powerful, but that's probably the thing that I'm least excited about when it comes to these grease pencil tools. So let's go over the things that are really getting me going. Now, let's say I'm getting tired or I need to draw a particularly straight line, or perhaps, you know, I'm just rubbish at drawing straight lines in general. One thing that's really exciting is the straighten stroke addition to this grease pencil tool here. I'm pretty okay at drawing lines, but say for example, I wasn't, and I had a little bit of a wobble accidentally in this man's arm, or perhaps there was a stroke that I couldn't get exactly right, no matter how much I tried, or I need a perfect stroke from point A to point B. Maybe I want to draw, you know, some specific boxes or whatever. The straighten stroke option 
option is a really powerful tool that if you just select it, you get to this scrolling straight force box down here that will go from 0%, which is your original line, to 100%, which is a perfectly straight line from the start to end points of your uh, line work. Now, this isn't removing those strikes because you can go from anywhere between 0% and 100% and it maintains it. And once you're happy with the result, you can then click or press enter off of that to confirm it. Additionally as well, if I were to press straight stroke again, bump, you can see that it's maintained my 80.9% that I left it on last time. And if I drag that up and down, you can see that it handles curves in this very strange way where it kind of pulls them out as if you were pulling a piece of thread. If you want to default that back to 100, you just shift and left click the straight stroke option here. And then the next time you press it, it will go to a perfectly straight line. So this can be useful for drawing things like the edges of buildings and things like that. Or like I said, if you have a particularly wobbly hand, you can use it to straighten up your line work. Say that curves ever so slightly too much, I'll click straight stroke and I'll just drag it down until I get something that I'm happy with. Straight and stroke, pretty cool. Now this is one that I'm very excited about. It is rotate canvas. So we all know that as um, drawers, animators, whatever you want to call us, sometimes it's hard to get an angle perfectly correct when you're trying to draw. And there was no simple way to rotate the canvas. For example, drawing the underside of his chin here requires quite the curve and it might be difficult to get that from a certain angle. You know, or perhaps this nose here as well might be easier to draw in two strokes. So we now have a shortcut to rotate the canvas, which is fantastic. It is control, alt, and middle mouse click, and that will allow you to rotate the canvas like in standard artwork softwares until you get an angle that you're happy with to start tackling. For example, I know that I like pulling down and towards the right when it comes to my strokes. So I can just start doing so until I get um, positions and angles that I'm happy with. To reset that view, you just press Control, Alt and middle mouse button again, but just click it, don't hold it, and it will reset it to standard. I can't tell you how useful this one is. Anyone that's done any drawing in digital software will know how handy it is to be able to just rotate your canvas until you're happy and then draw your line work. You get much, much steadier line work and you don't have to worry too much about your wrists getting cramped up and things like that as well. Super duper powerful. This next example works better with something that has a few more frames and it is a timeline scrub. Now, of course you can, when you're drawing, come down to here and scrub through the timeline to see what you're working with back and forth to see if you're happy with your motion. However, I find that when doing that, it takes a lot of time because you're drawing away Quite happily, you have to move your hand all the way down to the bottom of the screen, scrub, move back to where you were, etc. The timeline scrub here is so simple. You just hold Alt and middle mouse and wherever your mouse cursor is or stylus cursor is, the timeline representation for that active layer will appear over your artwork and you can move back and forth to scrub through. This is really good for flipping when you're adding in new frames or content and you want to check quickly back and forth between your frames. If you hold uh, either shift control or right click whilst you're doing this as well, you'll see it will snap to existing keyframes only. So we're going back and forth there on twos. And when I release control, we're going up and down on ones. This one is super useful. You know, you're coming in, you're drawing an extra stroke maybe you want some motion lines you know maybe as he's falling through the air we want some speed lines coming down like this and you just want to quickly check what that's going to look like as he drops so we know that you know on the next frame here we're going to want to bring this down like that and we'll just scrub back and forth and see how that looks really simple but really quite powerful this one is super useful for animators the final tools then are just some workflow things for when you're looking through your camera, if that's how you like to work, or if you're trying to set up your shot of your scene. As you can see, sometimes when you're scrolling in and out with the camera, you can lose where your camera boundaries are. So we have some zoom one to one, which is you know 100% size according to the pixels on your screen. We have a zoom to fit, which will fit it inside your active area, very useful. And we have some rotational options here. For example, if I were to rotate my canvas and I wanted this to be the new default camera angle, for whatever reason, I could save that. And then if I were to rotate around again, I can click this reset rotation to go back to that saved angle. And of course, if you want to go back to the very default, control alt middle click to reset, save that again as the default. And the final tool here is really useful for drawing, not so much for my style, but for those styles that have foreshortening or perspective. Uh, it's the classic canvas flip that you get in a lot of art software where you can flip and mirror your canvas to check whether your perspectives on foreshortening and things like that are correct. Not particularly useful for me, but I understand that that was probably quite a requested tool for some animators.
So have a play with these tools, see which ones you'll find useful. I know canvas rotation and timeline scrub are gonna be incredibly useful for me. I know this isn't a particularly exciting tutorial uh, compared to some of the other stuff that we've done on this channel, but it is a really useful one for anybody that actually wants to get work done. Tutorials like this really are the bread and butter of the things that helped me as a animator when I first got started, even though they're not terribly exciting. So please do forgive me for that for this week, but hopefully you'll see where the benefit of this is. And we'll be back to something much more exciting next week I'm planning a really cool tutorial on how to mix 2D and 3D when it comes to making animatics and the benefit of that when it comes to really speeding up your workflow due to the nature of how 3D and 2D can be blended in Blender. Oh there you go. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time on TipTut. Unbelievable thanks to my level two and above members without whom TipTut would not be possible. I say it every single week and I mean it every single week. You guys are utterly delightful. Thank you so much. If you'd like to become a member of the TipTut Zone for exclusive perks and benefits, you can click that join button below. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.